the last 15 years, there's more and more talk about magnesium and how crucial it is to different systems in your body. Today, I have Dr. Carolyn Dean, who I consider the queen of magnesium here to talk about that, how it affects your gut, your thyroid, and your overall health in general. So stay tuned. Now, there are a lot of things about magnesium I did not know, and I've been in the alternative 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 health space for a little bit of time now. So I'm really excited to share this episode with you. And I'm going to have some links down in the show notes for you for Dr. Carolyn Dean's website where you can find her book, her products, and another website where she just purely does education on this topic and how you can improve your health. She has been studying magnesium and using it in her work for the last 45 years, and she has a wealth of knowledge to share. And she's also a very lovely person. So I'm really excited to share this episode with you and hope you enjoy it. Today's show is brought to you by Upgraded Formulas. They have my absolute favorite magnesium. You can get the best and only clinically studied stabilized nano magnesium supplement on the market from Upgraded Formulas using my code YOGI for 10% off. Did you know that magnesium is actually required for over 800 enzymatic reactions in the body? This clinically studied magnesium has proven to improve sleep quality and energy by over 60%, specifically improving light sleep measurement by 90%, REM sleep by 150%, and deep sleep by 250%. That means more energy, better mood, and deeper sleep. Who doesn't want that? What makes this the best on the market? This specific magnesium is nano magnesium, which means it is easier for your body to absorb and use. In fact, it is absorbed up to 99.99%, which means you'll feel the results instantaneously. A lot of people are quick to talk about the benefits of sunlight, but what gets often missed in the conversation is the benefit of darkness and the importance of protecting yourself from blue and green light after sunset. That is why I choose Viva Rays as my go-to source for protecting my circadian rhythms. You can use the code YOGI to save 15% off at Viva Rays. Now, you may have seen some of these studies popping up. I call them fear-mongering about blue blockers not being effective. And that is a partial truth because when you use blue blockers that are clear or that have not been tested with a spectrometer to actually block what they say they do, they will not protect your circadian rhythms and they are not catching those key wavelengths that you need to be blocking in order for your body to be able to repair for you to make melatonin, which is a master antioxidant. And artificial light at night has been in the scientific literature extensively linked to a host of hormonal cancers, obesity, diabetes, and all sorts of metabolic issues. That again is why I choose Viva Rays as my go-to source for protecting my circadian rhythms to allow my body to get adequate darkness at night. You can use the code YOGI to save 15% over at Viva Rays, and you can actually trust that they block the frequencies of light that they say they do. Thanks to Viva Rays for sponsoring today's podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Today, I have Carolyn Dean here on the show by popular demand and uh, excited to chat. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you, Sarah. It's good to be with you. And of course, before I do an interview, um, you know, I'll go into the person's podcast or whatever. And what I found with you is you're the most eclectic person, the most eclectic uh -huh. interviewer. You look at the somatic work that you're doing with um, Irene Lyon, mm -hmm. the uh, Jack Cruz and, and his, you know, light bulb theory and uh, Cohen, Tom Cohen, and, you know, his words that cannot be repeated. Yes. So what I realized, and, and I've, I've done about 40 interviews in the past um, few months mm. because of my um, latest magnesium book. And what we're all trying to do is find solutions for people, find therapies, and mm -hmm. there's a lot to choose from. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can pick and choose bits and pieces, but you know, some people are specialized in 
in what they say and and they make it seem like well that's all there is that's it and you have to do this and that scares people Mm -hmm. it really scares people and what i've learned because i've been at this i've been in practice since 1979 that's when i was born (laughs) there you go and and so i've i've watched the the progression of alternative medicine and also the decline of allopathic medicine. I've seen that even alternative medicine isn't really fitting people's needs because Mm -hmm. they became commercialized and Mm -hmm. and tried to to be kind of allopathic to fit in. So we have the extremes and and what, what we're doing as health consultants is trying to give people solutions and have them take responsibility for their own health. Mm -hmm. And of course I have my solutions. As I said, I've been at this for what is it? 55 years. (laughs) And before that, (laughs) yeah, before that I was in, um, as a teenager, I got involved in natural, Mm. natural health and lifestyle. Nobody would listen to me. So I went into medicine and, you know, people kind of listened to me and, I became, I did my naturopathic after my medicine because that's mm. how I wanted to practice. Mm. And then the naturopathic world, I mean, they've gone kind of, oh, we have to do science. And yeah. so they'll take one individual vitamin or herb and, and act like they're giving you information, but it, it's, it's too blinders. You have to look at the whole picture. Mm-hmm. So let me just say what I've, what I settled on because actually back in 2008, I had an online wellness uh, module system. It wasn't a coaching system, but I had over a hundred different modules mm. told people about Wi-Fi and by, about grounding and about diet and about nutrients. It had everything. So I thought this is, you know, this is what I'm giving to the world. But 2008, there was a the huge economic crash mm-hmm. and people just started, you know, saying to me, emailing and saying, I don't even have time to read your modules mm-hmm. anymore, let alone implement them. And what, what they said was tell me exactly what to take. It mm. wasn't what oh, to I do. <laughs> yeah. Tell that. me what yeah. to take. <laughs> and, and I realized that you can't get around that. You can't, mm-hmm tell people, well, you have to detoxify, you have to do a good diet, you have to walk in the beach, you have to swim, you have, and too many things to do. You have to stop this, you have to, you know, well, of course, we know you have to stop things. But what I realized, because of my own magnesium journey, I'm severely magnesium, I was severely magnesium deficient. Mm. And you know, necessity is the mother of invention. So I got over that. But in, in the in the process, I had to develop a non laxative magnesium, because mm-hmm. I got tremendous laxative effect from ordinary magnesium compounds. Yeah, yeah. So what I settled on was, since the body need uh, 80% of known metabolic reactions in the body require magnesium, 80%. Mm. And I realized, well, there's the grounding. When you give people magnesium, they sleep better. Their mm-hmm. energy is better. They, their twitches and tightness be, uh, diminishes because um, magnesium is responsible for, for the relaxation phase of, of um muscle or nerve action potential calcium gives us the movement and but magnesium causes a relaxation because magnesium opens up the calcium ion channels Mm. that are allow calcium in and out of cells if you don't have enough magnesium calcium builds up in the cells so there was my grounding from personal experience i could see this but the other personal experience is yeast overgrowth. Mm. And yeast overgrowth, I mean, what have we got? Antibiotics since, you know, childhood, the birth control pill, um, steroids, you know, asthma, 
treatments and all that. So we've developed a situation where the normal budding yeast in our large intestine without the, the bacterial interface that you kill off with antibiotics, you kill off good and bad bacteria, it leaves a vacuum in the small intestine and you say, hey, you know, there's a new home for us. So they mm. crawl up into the small intestine and if we're eating lots of sugar, like I did when I was a kid and still probably do, you feed the yeast. Mm -hmm. And then this yeast um, in its invasive stage, it's thread-like mycelial hyphae stage. And it actually pokes holes in the small intestine. Mm. And then through those pokey holes, which we call leaky gut, your yeast toxins and undigested food migrates and gets into the bloodstream. So then you get your allergy reactions, you get your toxic reactions. And the two together, magnesium deficiency, and then you have to talk about the other minerals are going to be deficient too, but you start with magnesium. So you've got magnesium deficiency, yeast overgrowth, causing head to toe symptoms mm -hmm. that nobody can diagnose. Mm -hmm. I've come to call it total body meltdown. Mm -hmm. And I developed that in the um, late 70s. I started practice in 1979. Right away, we could see chronic fatigue syndrome, you know, rising. When you mm -hmm. were born, people were developing chronic fatigue syndrome. And, oh, it's psychological. It's, you know, just give antidepressants and all the mm -hmm. rest of it. But we could, you know, the few of us who had common sense could see it was more women than men. Women were multitasking, trying to do everything, be a professional, be a mother, take care of the, the parents uh, who were aging. And on the birth control pill after they had a couple of kids, you know, the layers and layers taking blue vaccines. So that led to total body meltdown, which affects the thyroid. If you, even if you have one child, your thyroid is really weakened. Mm -hmm. And for the thyroid, you don't wait until your thyroid is dead and then give thyroid hormone replacement. You give nine minerals that are necessary for thyroid hormone production. It's not just iodine, it's not just iodine and selenium, mm -hmm. but it goes into boron, copper, molybdenum, manganese, magnesium, of course. So all these minerals are necessary. Mm. We're not getting minerals anymore. Mm. Our water is so filtered at the main you know, processing plant and at our tap. Oh yeah, we're, it's we're, a mess. Yeah, we're drinking reverse osmosis water or distilled water. Mm -hmm. I start with just adding sea salt. Every mm -hmm. liter of water you drink, you add a quarter teaspoon of a good colorful sea salt. Mm -hmm. If it's not colorful, it's been refined. So minerals, minerals run the body. I yes. was it Linus Pauling said all chronic disease, or all illness begins with mineral deficiency. So what are the minerals doing? They're, getting into the cells and pulling water behind them. And then that starts the metabolic processes. The minerals are the electrolytes that run the heart and the brain. The minerals, um, they're creating what's called a zeta potential, which is the, the balance of positive and negative anions, well, uh, cations and anions. And if there are too many positive cations, which it's chemicals, smoke, alcohol, coffee, these positive cations in the body are going to cause red blood cell clumping. Mm. And then that slows down your oxygenation. It can lead to, to blood clots in various parts of the body, etc. If you don't have enough minerals. So, so that's my thesis. So I lay it at your feet and I'll take questions. <laughs> I mean, there's so much there, uh, that we could talk about. Uh, I guess one of the things I'd love to go back and talk about is back in 2008, I remember we had 
That's we actually were benefiting off of that big crash because we bought our first our first home in the midst of that. Uh, and mm. all the prices were plummeting. So we got a, you know, a decent deal on our first house, but, um, you know, the grounding and the walking outside, all of that stuff, I would love to just kind of go back to, um, mm. how you used to, because th that's absolutely unheard of to be talking about back then. No one was talking about it at all. How does that impact the body's ability to hold on to minerals and, and have healthy mineral status? Um, hmm. Yeah. Who did I start hearing this from? Dr. Sinatra. Hmm, he, okay. um, he since passed away. He was a cardiologist and he was talking about grounding, grounding sheets and, you know, ground, um, in, in your bedroom, grounding sheets on the floor. But if you could get out into the grass and the sunlight, I think, I think that really has to do with the negative ions. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, get, it gets back to that. And that is antidoting the positive ions. So, you know, they talk yeah. about after a thunderstorm, there are all these negative ions in the atmosphere and that makes you feel better. I'm, I have the great fortune to live uh, near the ocean. I can mm -hmm. see it right there mm -hmm. in Maui. Oh, and wow. they say just walking along along the beach walk, you're getting all these negative ions. You go in the ocean. Um, ocean water has three times the magnesium as calcium. Wow. You're getting your vitamin D if you're outside. If you're outside doing your footwork in the grass, then you've got the sun. You've got the sun in your eyes. You've got, you know, everything's lit up. But but what about the Eskimos? Mm -hmm. How are they surviving? What about people who are in, in the winter? Do we all have to get um, the, the lamps, the full spectrum lamps and put them on us? Or are there ways that we can supplement so that we can get through the winter so there are all, there are different ways, you know, what's a person going to feel like if, if they're told, well, you just have to get out and get your son and mm. that's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. you, you can't do that with people. You know, yeah. I'm, um, or was a practicing clinician. I had to sit face to face with human people Yeah, and you can't, yeah. you learn what people will tolerate. You see in their eyes when you give them you know, too many things to do, they shut down. Mm -hmm. So you can't run a practice where a person isn't going to follow what you tell them. Mm -hmm. So with, with vitamin D, what happens there? It's, um, yeah, it's activated by sunlight, but it also requires magnesium in mm -hmm. order to activate it. Mm -hmm. So, okay, then we give people a, a well-absorbed magnesium, which is what, what, I finally created with a chemist is a, a picometer size stabilized ion of magnesium and all the other minerals too, that the body cells accept readily and then they get to work. Because if you're playing with compounds, then there's so little absorption. Mm. There's so little time when that magnesium compound disassociates into its two parts, and then in that split second, the magnesium has to find its way into the cells. So the absorption of these minerals is terrible. Mm -hmm. And why is that different now than maybe 100 years ago? They say 100 years ago, the US Department of Agriculture, we used to get 500 milligrams of magnesium in our food. Now we're lucky to get 200. Mm. In the soil, the soil bacteria break down minerals. They're, you know, they're processing dirt through their body, the, the worms and everything, the bacteria. And what the plant rootlets will accept is picometer size mineral ions. So we get those into the plants. That's why plant food is so awesome. If the soil still has magnesium. Mm. The soil doesn't have magnesium anymore. The farmer that I support here, I heavily support an organic biodynamic 
farmer and he can't afford enough Epsom salts to, to put on his 46 acres to mm -hmm. get the magnesium. I've tried to live off the farm as an experiment and I can't do it. My heart palpitations come back from mm -hmm. magnesium deficiency. I see in conferences, I would see um, vegans, vegetarians who would come up after a magnesium lecture and say, well, you know, I have this eye twitching and I get mm. I get leg cramps and I, and I'm drinking 30, 40 ounces of green drink a day. I should be getting my minerals. And I say, well, obviously you're not. Mm -hmm. Take this liquid magnesium and come back tomorrow. And they take a teaspoon or so and they're fine because mm. they're supremely healthy, but they just don't have enough magnesium to run their body. Mm -hmm. So these experiments let me know that we are we are just so deficient in magnesium and we end up taking medications for magnesium deficiency symptoms in the magnesium. Uh, what is it called? Magnesium, the missing link to total health. I have a list of 65 health conditions that mm -hmm. are misdiagnosed. So, you know, what happens when, when you have angina, you're put on six medications mm. because they think, oh, you've got a heart problem, then, then we've got to uh, dampen down your cholesterol, which is a big myth. I mean, what the, the statins do is they'll, they'll bash down the cholesterol, but there is no study that says by bashing down the cholesterol, you'll live longer. Mm, and right, fact, exactly. It, yeah, yeah. There's a higher mortality, all cause mortality with people on statins. So they try to, well, there's not so many cardiovascular death, deaths, but they're already dead of something else because of all the side effects. Mm -hmm. So the magnesium deficiency problem goes very deep. Um, asthma can be the bronchial tubes going into the muscles in the bronchial tubes going into spasm because of magnesium deficiency and mm. you're wheezing, et cetera, and you're given a corticosteroid drug. So you get yeast overgrowth. But if you even just nebulize some diluted uh, picometer magnesium, that will relax or you take oral magnesium. And I'm going to say picometer magnesium, Sarah, because um, the FDA won't let me mention my my product names uh, in relation to disease. They mm. have got us totally, what is it? Our First Amendment rights have been taken away when it comes to talking about dietary supplements. You can talk mm -hmm. about them, but as um, as someone who owns a dietary supplement company, I'm not allowed to tell people that I can help you with my dietary supplements. Mm. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I hate to hear that. And, you know, it's not just the same as just getting a regular magnesium uh, from, let's say, Amazon, right? Because it, those, the, the body may not utilize as well. Am I correct in saying that? Well, you don't get enough, but yeah. I always say that because magnesium is so necessary, so deficient, 80% of your body needs it, that any amount of magnesium is going to be beneficial. Oh, well, that's good. But usually um, if you're trying to take enough uh, to work on health problems like high blood pressure, or angina, or leg cramps, or restless legs, or headaches, or migraines, or heart palpitations, um, the um, taking larger amounts will give a lot of people the laxative effect. Mm -hmm. And with the magnesium compounds, I mean, what you're looking at on a label, you'll see like a magnesium, magnesium three and eight, mm -hmm. and then they'll say 2000 milligrams right on the front label. And you go, oh, I'm getting 2000 milligrams of magnesium. But no, you turn the label around and you look at the elemental magnesium you have to take three capsules to get 144 milligrams. Wow. Because in a 2000 milligrams of magnesium, three and eight, there's only three milligrams, like 45 milligrams of magnesium. 
Wow. And you think, oh my gosh, Meg, what's going on here? Why is why is this so hyped up and all the rest yeah. of it? And it is majorly hyped up that product. Oh, it's yeah. it's out of China. It really just hit the market and they said it's the only magnesium that can get into the brain. And they did that based on a a rat study that mm. showed there was a seven percent increase in magnesium absorption into the cerebral spinal fluids of these poor little rats, their product compared with, I think it was magnesium citrate, a 7% mm -hmm. difference. I mean, it's almost within the margin of error. So then they just went to town on their marketing. Wow. And shortly after everybody got the message, oh, magnesium L3 and 8 is um, good for my brain, they... Mm -hmm. They, they it was patented right away, but they double and tripled the, the price of it. So wow. it's really, this is the marketing of, of drug companies that have gotten involved with the dietary supplement industry. But I will tell you that you can find the early studies on magnesium where they used magnesium oxide, mm. which is only 4% absorbed. And it it works in every study. It's like, oh, there were benefits. Oh, there were benefits. 4% absorbed. Now it's going to help people with constipation and, and because it has a huge laxative effect. I would die. I would be, you know, yeah. I would end my life in the toilet because of the laxative effect. And that's why many people turn away from magnesium mm -hmm. when their doctor says, oh, take this magnesium oxide. You know, I've heard it's good. And, and what it was, Sarah, is back in the day, a, a woman who owned a magnesium oxide company, she gave free samples to all the magnesium researchers to do their studies. Mm. So their studies all say magnesium oxide. So okay. the doctors think, oh, that's the one that's to the do. One. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about uh, people who take magnesium? And it could be the type of magnesium they're taking, I'm assuming, after hearing this but they have issues, like it kind of goes the opposite way for them. I've had this happen, not a lot, but with a couple of clients where they clearly have a deficiency, but they take a magnesium supplement and then they're awake, uh, can't mm -hmm. sleep, feel more. Yeah. Um, there's mm -hmm. like almost a paradoxical reaction to it. Right. So those are people that are taking it at night usually. Mm -hmm. And the priority in their body is to get to get more energy. Mm -hmm. So the magnesium is is driving their mitochondrial ATP to mm -hmm. make the ATP adenosine triphosphate energy molecule. So it's it's just a matter if you tell them to take it in the morning, base it out. I mean, that's why my magnesium is liquid. So you mm. put it in your sea salted water, and you sip it through the day. Mm. You do not take it all at once. A bolus, yeah. And, you know, doing that, you get it into your cells in, in um, you know, dosing it rather than a shot. Because a lot of people will oh, take all my vitamins and the yep, minerals the in the time. morning. Yep, yeah, yeah. But no, that, that in some people will cause um, a laxative effect. Mm -hmm. And like I said, at night you take it and it'll wake you up because your body is working on the energy pathways more than just calming you down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I've always wondered about that. I've always thought, is it a sodium potassium imbalance maybe that, you know, then they have a reaction to the magnesium because that's that kind of baseline's not established, but you think it's more just the extra... Uh, increased it, ATP production. I think so. But you mentioned potassium. That's mm -hmm. really important because yeah. uh, you don't absorb magnesium properly unless you have potassium and vice versa. That's what I So thought. that yeah. is huge. Yeah. And, you know, medically, they, uh, they put a kibosh on potassium yeah, many years ago. Yeah. Many years ago, there was a product that was a uh, time release, a mm. potassium medical product, medical, I guess, a prescription product. And what happened is that time release dissolved in, I think, the small intestine and started causing ulceration. Mm. 
because it, it yeah because it's um i don't know if it's acidic or or just you know m mineral concentration uh against the small intestinal lining so they they kind of banned potassium mm -hmm. they banned it to the extent that um, the fda even today says you can't have a potassium supplement where the dosage is um, more than 99 milligrams yep so you you look at um, the RDA of potassium, it's 4,700 4, milligrams. <laughs> so, you know, what? Well, how are you going to do it? Right. So, um, I mean, I kind of solved that because um, instead of making my one dose, one teaspoon, I made my one dose of 99 milligrams, a quarter teaspoon. Okay. So you could take a teaspoon or two and build up your levels. And, and with a picometer mineral, you're getting two and three times the, the effect compared to a mineral compound. So yeah, did we finish the mineral compounds? I mean, we were supposed to get our minerals from our plants, right, from the soil, yep, and then yep. eat those plants. Mm -hmm. And then we would, seriously, we would have mm -hmm. enough magnesium. But we can't do that anymore. Mm. You think the same is true with potassium as well? Because I, I I get people and I'm like, I know there's a potassium issue for <laughs> sure here. Uh, and yeah, it's hard to tell people take XYZ amount of potassium because 4,700 might be too much for people to take on a regular basis. I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts mm -hmm. on that. Yes, it's deficient as well. And, and we really proved that more recently with the carnivore diet, the keto oh, yeah. diet, the paleo diet. That's where I get the worst is that people, yeah. as soon as they, and I'll tell them, don't cut your carbs. Don't do it immediately. You're going to do this yeah. slowly and you're going to push in some mineral supplementation. <laughs> yeah. I can't sleep. I'm have all this anxiety. I, all of a sudden I can't sleep. I'm like, cause you were probably potassium deficient to begin with. And then you mm -hmm. cut all your carbs out and now you're in real trouble. Right. Right. The, what little you were getting right. put you, you get quickly, none. quickly over the edge. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, sometimes it's dramatic mm -hmm. within a couple of weeks, but mm -hmm. what I tell people is um, go to the the dietary lists of foods uh, or the mineral list of foods and put in your diet and then press potassium and see what you're getting. If you're getting 2000 milligrams potentially in your diet, then you, you need um, another 2000. Mm -hmm. And that in my world, the picometer potassium, you do two teaspoons and, and you'll know if you feel better. Mm -hmm. See, this is the thing about a well-absorbed mineral or as I use as well, food-based vitamins mm -hmm. is your body immediately recognizes that, oh, that's good. I mean, with me, um, when I created my picometer magnesium, I mean, within within a week, you know, half of my symptoms were gone. Wow. But Sarah... I had to go over a year uh, to get rid of my heart palpitations fully. Wow. And by fully, I mean, I wanted to go a day or two without my magnesium and not start getting heart palpitations. I wanted to make sure I was fully saturated. Mm. So we've got people out there who are, are really suffering. They'll take a magnesium, get the laxative effect, stop mm -hmm. it. And then look at the, you know, the hundred supplements on some, some website and start matching up their symptoms and, mm -hmm. and end up with Body a doesn't cover. work that way. No, no. It wants the basics first. Mm -hmm. It wants to be grounded in the, in the, as we're saying, and the minerals yeah. and the vitamins. Yeah. And that, you know, a lot of people don't realize, and this is the mistake I see when people drop their carbs out. Um, you know, with good intentions to bring down inflammation in the body, but they add salt, lots of salt, and they don't mm -hmm. realize that all that salt they're pushing in, they're pushing their potassium down even further. And that's, I think, contributing even more to the magnesium issue. So 
Right. Yeah. And sea salt would be better, of course. Mm-hmm. But yes, mm-hmm. I, I hadn't heard that, but that, that makes sense. I mean, they want to season, you know, mm-hmm. carnivore diet. You, you mainly just salt, salt the whole thing. So well, there's yeah, these we've... supplement powders that are like very high ratio of sodium to potassium. And I'm like, Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. And that'll make it even worse. You know, there's, yeah. some, there's a really popular one that, uh, a lot of people talk about and promote. They've got a great marketing, uh, team and mm-hmm. I'll tell people in my private community, I can't mention it on the podcast. I don't want to bad mouth anybody, but it's a really popular one. They've got all kinds of great flavors and it's like a thousand milligrams of sodium and 200 milligrams, I think of potassium and, Ooh. oh yeah. And people just drink that stuff all day long. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there has to be a balance when you take yeah. a high amount of sodium, you push your other, well, especially you'll push potassium. even that little amount of potassium out. But, mm-hmm. you know, I have to jump in and say, I'm pushing high, well, kind of high amounts of magnesium, mm-hmm. but it's because 80% of your body needs it. You know, your enzymes need it, even your digestive enzymes. I was going to ask about the digestive system because I, yeah. I want to talk about um, the digestive system, leaky gut, and then also jump back to thyroid. Cause those are, I would say mm-hmm. when people come to me with problems, those are the primary issues, mm-hmm. gut problems, and also thyroid problems. And I know, I know the mineral component with thyroid. Um, I definitely want to hear from you on that, but the gut and minerals, I don't really hear many people talking about that. Well, there's the gut and the minerals in terms of the the minerals necessary to make even the intestinal cells function properly Mm -hmm. and have the energy, the mitochondrial energy with ATP Mm -hmm. to protect the uh, intestinal lining, to do the surveillance, to keep the, you know, the various toxins at bay, to keep Mm -hmm. the the strength of the cell walls. But um, in terms of cell wall strength and leaky gut, I'd have to bring in the omega-3 fatty acids. Mm. You, You, cell membranes are made from essential fatty acids. And we've gotten into a system now where, we're avoiding fish because mm-hmm. of the, the mercury. mercury and heavy metal and chemical poisoning. Mm-hmm. But what what are we doing? We're taking these same fish and we're taking their livers and we're ultra processing the livers to get rid of the chemicals and the heavy metals. And the processing <clears throat> uses different chemicals and different gases so what's the residue in that um, fish liver oil that we're purchasing? And it, it's, it's, as I said, it's ultra processed mm-hmm. and it's hard to digest. I mean, mm-hmm. I have the, the burping problem with fish oil oh, over, over the years. Say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when I decided to make an omega-3, I made it out of algae oil mm. and algae oil. It's, where it's it's made it can be clean so it doesn't have to be processed and it's the the oil that the fish eat in order to make their omega-3s and also it it protects them the krill uh, that feeds the whales that the humpback whales that come here to Maui and if we keep um, fishing all the krill for our supplements, what are the whales going to do? That's mm. that's the next thing. Within the next decade, the whale population is going to tank again. So mm. the intestinal lining, as I've already said, the yeast are coming up, you know, they're getting fed with sugar. So they they move toward the food and they're poking holes. So I go after the yeast mm. in order to go after leaky gut. What has allopathic medicine done? Even even alternative medicine, they say, oh, leaky gut, it's small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Mm -hmm. Let's treat it with antibiotics, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which makes more yeast. So what I finally had to develop, because I I already mentioned I was very yeasty. Mm -hmm. I would would eat a whole bowl of ice cream and a Mm -hmm. can of syrupy peaches or pears every night when I was studying and 
so that's my yeast. The antibiotics when I was a kid, vaccines when I was a kid, mercury fillings, birth control mm -hmm. pill. So I've spent decades uh, avoiding sugar. You know, mm -hmm. I couldn't eat sugar, wheat, or dairy. Now we say sugar, gluten, and dairy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I know how difficult it is to um, take care of yeast. I know doctors don't get involved because mm -hmm. doctors don't know anything about diet. They'll mm -hmm. refer to a dietitian who will poo poo that they yeast don't know overgrowth anything about even it either. exists. No. Yeah. So what I finally decided was I would use a um, uh, gentle antifungal Saccharomyces boulardii. Okay, Sachi, is, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which That's has what been, been used... given my daughter because she had to take antibiotics, so she's been on the sac B. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, they use it in um, infant diarrhea. It's mm -hmm. so safe, mm -hmm. and um, I I match that with humic fulvic for sort of the pre probiotic and mineral. Mm -hmm. And um, there's the, just a couple other things in there uh, that I'm forgetting right now. And I um, I use that with um, a picometer silver. Mm -hmm. So cool. we've okay. got this natural anti uh, bacterial, anti yeast, anti viral, the silver in the picometer size it actually stimulates stem cell production. Oh. So that's a very, that's a side benefit. It's an incredible thing to work with. Silver was used as, as our original antibiotic, but then when penicillin came in, it sort of fell by the wayside. But you know that in burn victims, they're still using sil silver um, dressings in order to stop the burn wound mm -hmm. getting infected mm -hmm. so it's it's um it's a, used medically but because it's not patented and all the rest of it's so cheap then people people are dissuaded from using it i mean you can use um, a picometer silver as a nebulizer mm -hmm. or a nasal squirt or a, a throat gargle or a a um, enema or a douche all these the ways that people can use these natural remedies. So we're talking about yeast. I'm saying that with a gentle antifungal every day and pico sil uh, picometer silver every day, then your body keeps the yeast under control. You're not going to kill it all off and you don't want to, mm. but you can, you can maintain a decent diet so that you don't feel so so deprived mm -hmm. i mean we cannot say to people anymore that you, how many things you have to avoid we've got so much ptsd out there oh, you yeah. cannot make people feel deprived mm -hmm. and that's where you know um, clinically working one-on-one -on -one of people is so important yeah. you have to gauge how far they're willing to go yeah so you, you know sensitive I, either and just say yeah. oh, you need to move you need, <laughs> you need to do mm -hmm. this. Like, yeah, that's not very helpful for someone who's already stressed out, who has, you know, poor yeah. health, tell them they need yeah. to pick up their whole family and move, you know? No. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 The control or the power, the power aspect of, um, of health consultants or doctors or psychologists and psychiatrists i think it goes to people's heads sometimes oh it definitely does. you know it definitely yeah. does yeah 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 i mean we'll hear you'll hear as well people will come away from a doctor's appointment and said and say you know the doctor told me i'll never get rid of i'll this never condition. get rid of this my thyroid's right. never going to heal it's just going to disintegrate yeah. and get i've had that probably four times in the last couple of months in my private communities mm -hmm women right. go to the doctor, you've got Hashimoto's, sorry, your thyroid is just eventually mm -hmm. going to disintegrate and there's nothing you can do about it. Right. So let's move to thyroid, yeah. Sarah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. What do you Great got? Segue. <laughs> what have I got? Okay. I got it. So <laughs> the, what I learned early on in yeast overgrowth, candida albicans we're talking about 
is the, um, the toxins from, from yeast, uh, their alcohols, aldehydes, thymogen, mm -hmm. candida lysin. I, at one point, I found 78 different yeast toxins, wow. and they're mostly in the mold community, but you'll find these lists in the molds um, of hundreds of toxins. And then they'll say also occurs in candida albicans. So some of these toxins cross react with thyroid tissue. Mm. And what does that do? It sets up an inflammation, you know, your TPOs and your whatever, your antibodies start elevating. Mm -hmm. And so you, you work with yeast. I mean, that's what, and, and uh, with that working with yeast and then working with my, my picometer multiple mineral, I, it's got 12 minerals, nine of them support thyroid hormone production, I already mentioned. So rather than wait for your thyroid to punk out and then you use thyroid hormone replacement, either synthetic or natural, the natural isn't the, doesn't have the T1, T2, T3, and T4, it doesn't have the minerals. So mm -hmm. it's not gonna work 100% of the time, maybe it works better, The um, like armor thyroid or desiccated thyroid, maybe it works better than the synthetic, but it's not the answer. The mm -hmm. answer is getting your minerals. So, I mean, that's my basic um, thesis is um, cleaning out the yeast toxins and giving the minerals. And you do it at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's some, um, uh, practitioners who will say about this or that, oh, well, you can't treat the thyroid until you treat the adrenals mm -hmm. or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Man, they all work together. You know, there's kind of a tripod of thyroid adrenals and sex hormones. Mm -hmm. If one of them is, is failing, the other ones have to pick it up. And lately I've been saying, well, we, we also have to throw in the pancreas and insulin because there's so much that affects insulin mm -hmm. the besides just your diet and and sugar so yeah. we have to you know really dial back on our sugar intake not just for yeast but for the way it affects your insulin mm -hmm. and then insulin affects your weight and and i know in the interview um you did with um, jack cruz he talked about and you know you've all also experience being out in sunlight helps mm -hmm. you lose weight mm -hmm. and there i mean there's many ways to to look at the whole weight issue but we and still have to look at food i mean yeah, that's where yeah. i kind of dis you know don't not necessarily disagree but I, I some people just say it's only light and you can eat whatever you want and i just i disagree you st well remember you when people said that uh, yeah remember when people said that about intermittent fasting Right. Oh, you can just in this period of time eat all you, eat want, you want. And... No, it matters. No. It matters. No. It does. <laughs> yeah. you don't live in a vacuum. And there's, no. you know, there's, I don't think there's uh, an amount of sunlight you can get that's going to outdo a bad diet, uh, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And because we have mm -hmm. other things besides the diet that in interfere our non native EMF and, uh, chemical pollutants, toxins from the outdoors that we can't control, especially living in big cities. And I mean, there's so much that our bodies are dealing with on a daily basis. So it's kind of the food thing you ha you need to provide your body with the best nutrients possible. And sugar yeah. is not where, you know, it's not, um, is not necessarily a great base of what you want to be eating. I think. No, I, it's like I began to say about alcohol being a poison, you know, maybe sugar is a poison too. And I hate saying that because I love sugar. I, I live in Maui. I mean, mangoes and pineapples and all the rest of it, but, um, seed oils I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure i've heard you talking about them mm -hmm. what we have to do with diet i think if we realize that we don't get our, enough nutrients from food mm -hmm. anymore and we have to supplement if we realize that ultra processed food is poisoning us mm -hmm. and it makes us eat more Yes, we if we're on an ultra processed, even a processed diet, we're not getting the, any nutrients mm -hmm. 
-hmm. We're just getting calories. We will eat more of that to try to find some nutrients. So Mm -hmm. we'll gain weight because of that. Yeah. So with, with diet, I, I'm mainly telling people try to avoid sugar, gluten, Mm -hmm. dairy, and seed oils as Mm -hmm. much as possible and rotate them. I mean, Mm -hmm. once or twice a week and then, and then, um, check your symptoms. My inflammation index is, is these little fingers. Mm. (laughs) If I can, if I can close my fingers down like that Mm. and touching the top of my palm without pain, then it means I don't have too much inflammation Mm. and inflammation. You have to think, Oh, my knees are aching. Maybe I have arthritis. No, you have a bit of flu retention on your, on your knees or your mm-hmm. ankle. Yeah. And you have to look at that um, to treat that instead of, you know, selling your two-story house and, and moving to a one-story, which yeah, is what well, that's people- actually what happened to the lady that owned this house before us. I just found out that she, she could, mm. it's three flights of stairs. She couldn't handle it anymore. And uh, mm-hmm. it's sad. It's unfortunate. Yeah. 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 So it's the inflammation because what is the inflammation? It's um, it's a reaction to mm-hmm. allergens or toxins. It's mm-hmm. the body retaining fluid in order to dilute those toxins okay. yeah. Yeah. and putting the toxins as well into fat to, to you know, subdivide them from the rest of the body, those, the toxins. So mm-hmm. you're gaining weight, you're gaining fluid. And it's tightening up your joints. Mm-hmm. So this is where we have to to look at what we're eating, but also magnesium, great anti-inflammatory. Mm. So you take more magnesium as you get inflamed. I mean, we know about Epsom salts baths. Oh, if, yeah. you're, if you're achy or whatever, and you take an Epsom salts bath, oh, that feels so good. Well, that's the magnesium effect on your muscles. We have oh, 600 yeah. muscles in the body. Yeah. Any one of them can be tight and irritated. I think it's 45 miles of nerves and a- a- any inch of your nerves can be irritated and, mm-hmm. and over calcified and leading to the cells just destroying themselves with this hyperactivity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's I think we problem. swayed off the thyroid pathway there. What else would you add to the thyroid conversation for, for people who are listening that, I mean, like I said, Hashimoto seems to be a big problem, um, that, you know, low thyroid thyroid issues, and then people are gaining weight, they're feeling really bad. So what would be your kind of, uh, take home message from anything we didn't cover? Right. In, in my thyroid booklet, I, I have a lot of booklets, um, Mm. um, they're, they're kind of um, hidden behind a bit of a wall because the FDA doesn't like me talking about Mm -hmm. my products helping people. So uh, a lot of my booklets talk about my products. One is a thyroid booklet. And in that I quoted a couple of um, thyroid um, uh, practitioners and I can't remember their names right now. And um, both of them gave this incredible history of oh, I was in pharmacy school and I got run down and then uh, this happened and that happened. I got mono. This whole litany of the immune system crashing and then uh, they had yeast overgrowth symptoms, but they didn't explain it that way. So this this whole rundown of the adrenals getting affected Mm -hmm. and all that. And then they finally say, Oh, and, and I kept pushing my doctor to look at my thyroid, but my numbers were okay. And finally, I re- they realized I had low thyroid. So mm. to get to the thyroid, you go through um, magnesium deficiency. And one of the people was saying she wasn't sleeping. She, she had twitches and everything. So I'm there looking at, well, that's magnesium. Oh, that's mm. yeast overgrowth. And mm. definitely your thyroid. So A lot of people are going through that. They're going through these layers, this decline. In a lot of my books, I have this scenario where, you know, at birth, um, you may come through the birth canal and and the mother has yeast vaginitis. So the infant gets yeast ear infections. 
Uh And since doctors haven't got a clue of a yeast ear infection, they're Mm -hmm. treated for uh, bacterial. So they're given tons of antibiotics. I mean, I've had those cases in my practice where, you know, this eight month old little boy had been on five courses of antibiotics already. And the mother was a nurse and she said, I, it smelled sort of yeasty. And she, so we put her on a anti yeast program and all the rest of it. So you're born, you can be born with yeast and mm-hmm. then you can develop ear infections and, mm-hmm. and have to get, uh, what is it, holes punched in your ears. Yeah, and then, then, yeah, the, t- the tubes. So there's a surgical intervention. And, um, Actually, let me sidebar, because I was listening to some of um, Irene Lyon's Mm -hmm. story about her health journey, Mm -hmm. and she talked about having, you know, like six different surgeries in her life and and sort of the toxic buildup. But do you know what happens during surgery? They use um, inhaled anesthetics Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that are made with fluoride. Oh. And they started using fluoride in a lot of our drugs, like Prozac and yeah. Cipro, et cetera, oh. because it makes them uh, more accessible to cell membranes. Oh. They can, I guess, ram through the cell membranes with this thor- fluoride toxin. And the, the drug companies will say, well, in a test tube, the fluoride doesn't break down test tube is not your gut. Your gut has a trillion bacteria and their job is to break down chemicals. Mm. So they will break down these drugs and release the fluoride. And then that fluorine molecule will attach to different things, especially magnesium. Mm. So I think what happened to, to Irene is she got magnesium deficient every time she had a surgery which escalated her symptoms. Wow. And, you know, when you have a magnesium deficiency and you're tight and you're anxious and you're not sleeping and you're trying to figure out what's wrong with me, what's wrong with me, you start making up stories. You say, well, maybe it's this and maybe it's that. It's almost a paranoia. Mm-hmm. I know, you know, when I look at my history, because when you listen to Irene, you start thinking, oh, yeah, are what I experience, are these symptoms that I'm experiencing or these feelings, mm-hmm. are they related to some past? Mm-hmm. Like, I hate slamming doors. Mm-hmm. And I I finally heard a story about um, my grandfather when I was, you know, I guess between one and three years old, he was suffering mercury poisoning. Oh, wow. He was an inventor and a photo engraver. So he probably had Mad Hatter syndrome. Oh, wow. And he, he would erupt and, and uh, slam doors and everything. So I inherited that. And actually what I do, um, I wanted to say this again, because Irene and you, you go into the somatic a- aspect and mm-hmm. what do we hold uh, in our muscles that are emo- emotions or experiences or trauma. Well, the way I look at all that is through um, German new medicine. Oh, okay. It's also, it's also called total biology. It, yeah. Do you know, you've heard yeah, of German I had Dr. New Melissa cell on the show and I was actually looking at another practitioner uh, to possibly bring on in the future. Cause it's definitely very interesting. It's fascinating because it it helps me address people's conflict Mm -hmm. instead of it being a psychiatric or even a psychological um, aspect of what they're going through to, to look at the conflict basis of disease is to look at the layers of, of even our ancestors. And I'll, I'll just quickly tell you when I studied, um, German new medicine. It's also in the French um, had um, a system called total biology, Mm -hmm. you know, very similar. So when I studied this, I decided, well, maybe I'll find out what my ancestors were like. So I called my aunt in Scotland and we started talking and she gave me a story. She didn't know what I was after. She said in the 1920s, 
three young men that were my ancestors who were in their 20s went across the bay in a dory to pick up a doctor to bring him back for a home birth. A storm kicked up and they all drowned. Oh, wow. Now, when I was, well, I've always had a fear of water, oh. uh, but I'm a, I'm a quadruple Pisces with a Sagittarius rising, which helps. Quadruple Pisces, I love water. I will just hang out in water and drown if I have to, because I mm. love it. So I couldn't even stand a shower in my face. I was so, you know, oh, kind of wow. weird about water. When I was in med school, in my mid-20s, same age as these guys, I said, I have to get over this water fear. Mm. Didn't know anything about my history. So I, we were living in um, the nurse's residence uh, attached to Mount Sinai Hospital where I did my internship. I would go into the, into the pool and just start putting my face in, putting my face in. And I taught myself how to swim. But it wasn't until you know, 60 years ago, one, six years ago, we were moving to Maui. And I said, oh, my gosh, I have this fear of water. and We're moving to an island. I'm stuck with water. Mm. So that's when I talked to my aunt, found out this story, and I said, oh, my gosh, how was I trying to solve my ancestral fear of water? And what did I learn? In mm. my 20s, same age as these men, I decided to become a doctor so we wouldn't have to go across the bay and get a doctor. And uh, so I was solving the problem that unconsciously subconsciously was in my ancestral dna mm. and yeah. and i also decided back then i'm not going to do home deliveries they're too dangerous i mean here i was going in as an alternative medicine doctor i had mm -hmm. my naturopathic training i attracted the whole city of toronto but i refused to do home births mm. so all all, all that was based on, I think, my ancestral history. Mm -hmm. And unless you sort of allow yourself to think, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe the aunt that I identify with, maybe I'm like her because of birth order and um, how am I living my life? So you're always looking for examples of how you can, you can elevate yourself and, mm -hmm. and get out of the biases. I mean, even, you know, when I'm walking, and I see people kind of hunched over. I straighten up. I mean, mm -hmm. you use the same thing. Yeah. All these cues. And, you know, I'll, I'll say that here I am, age 75, and I feel like I'm in my 30s, especially because I've got my magnesium deficiency under control. I, you know, I have great energy and blah, 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 all the rest of it. And we can all do that by looking mm -hmm. at, I say by looking at the physical structure first, you know, supporting that. And then we have the energy and the focus and the emotional balance to be, to look at these other things. Mm -hmm. It's so difficult, you know, when you take a person who's in the middle of an emotional meltdown to send them to a psychologist and psychiatrist, what do they do? They just talk about their problems mm -hmm. over and really over again, anything. reinforcing them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, get strong first. I agree. I agree. Well, you mentioned you have a new book um, and it's right there. So I'd love to talk a little bit about that, maybe where people can find it and uh, any of your other information, because I know people are going to be searching after they hear the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I mean, what happened here, Sarah, is when I was in um, New York in the... Um, 90s, I went to New York from Toronto to work on an AIDS and chronic fatigue clinical trial using a natural system, natural remedy system. And um, I got involved with uh, publishing a little, little booklet on health. And somehow I got on the uh, Manhattan TV. I was on the view for Pete's sake. Wow. Back in the day of Barbara Walters. So oh, wow. I did a lot of um, uh, local TV, morning shows and everything. Uh, but when direct to consumer drug advertising came out, they, they stopped all that. They stopped mm -hmm. 
anything that could counter the drugs that they were advertising. But I um, somehow Random House got a got wind of me and asked me to write a book on magnesium. Mm. So I wrote the Magnesium Miracle. It came out in 2003, 2017. I was writing the third edition. By that time, it was 600 pages. It had 600 references. Wow. So what what we decided to do in, in my online dietary supplement company was put out uh, kind of a short form it's big print it has <laughs> and it has all the relevant information that I've learned over the past whatever what is it 25 years 30 years oh and and time means nothing you know yeah. we yeah the bible the bible says we're we can live well as long as we want but 120 is the standard age that we should be living so wow. I'm going for that so in this book, what I it it reads kind of like an encyclopedia because I said people don't realize what magnesium deficiency can look like. Mm -hmm. It can be acid reflux, mm. adrenal fatigue, anxiety and panic attacks, atherosclerosis, atrial fibrillation, mm -hmm. bowel disease, calcification. Aging is calcification, mm -hmm. and what anti well, n what neutralizes um, calcium buildup is magnesium. Mm -hmm. If you put magnesium powder in a glass of water and add, no, if you put calcium powder in a glass of water and add magnesium, it will dissolve better. Mm -hmm. So magnesium and vitamin K2, they have the ability to direct calcium that you you absorb from your food or calcium that's um, depositing in soft tissues, direct that calcium to the bones and teeth. So in atherosclerosis, what you've got there is damage to a kind of arterial wall. Cholesterol comes along as a Band-Aid mm. to try to heal it up and calcium will, will deposit on that cholesterol. And the reason why you get little tears in, in your arterioles or your artery walls is vitamin C deficiency causing deficiency in collagen. Mm. So that's a whole world that people don't understand. Huge. That, yeah. I mean, that is, that is huge. Yeah. So anyway, we, so the book, it, it's a very good uh, primer for, for people and, I as I keep saying, I can't talk about my products, but I think in the back, I I have an overview of of the research actually my company is doing on um, on absorption. Because let me just let me just end with this. There's so much to say, but yeah. um, <laughs> blood testing does not. Um, mm -hmm follow magnesium properly mm -hmm. they use a serum magnesium test and in your serum there's only one percent of your total body magnesium in the serum they put the dipstick in there they can take out the blood and it's always normal this mm -hmm. is what the doctors say oh it's always normal it's very tight range but it's normal because of biofeedback because the the body will um measure the amount of magnesium and you know gauge what's going on in the heart the heart's one big muscle if you don't have enough magnesium it starts to stutter and mm. it, you know you can have a myocardial infarction from low magnesium so it's going to pull magnesium out of bones and muscle to make that level always appropriate mm -hmm. so you can be on the very lowest level of that range and the doctors will say oh you're fine mm -hmm. but what we've done i've got a couple of one study is done we're working on another study where we used ionized magnesium testing mm -hmm. to test for the ions that are what gets into cells and because i have a picometer stabilized ion of magnesium you've got a lot of of magnesium ions they're they're measurable um, we gave human subjects, I don't use rats, 
human subjects that the teaspoon of our liquid magnesium, 300 milligrams, mm -hmm. and within one to two hours, they all had measurably high levels of ionized magnesium that kind of freaked out the researchers. And they were also freaked out because they did um, a Zeta sizer. It mm -hmm. measures the, the material in a liquid. So we had a liquid amount of our picometer magnesium. They shone this laser through it and it did not uh, disperse uh, which would mean that there were material substance in the liquid. So there's this very strong tasting mineral that that is that has nothing in it, which means it's it's below a certain measure, which is the picometer. Mm -hmm. So the researchers uh, they they tested it three times with this zetasizer because they couldn't believe it, and they said it at this size it is it can be fully absorbed. Wow. So we've got to educate the, the community that they have to do this testing because they're, mm -hmm. they're missing all these deficiency symptoms. Absolutely. I think it's so <laughs> important. So yeah. you've got your book. Do you have a website people can go to if they want to learn more about your work? Absolutely. My um, store website is rnareset.com. Okay. I was into RNA a long time ago. rnareset.com. I'm not allowed to educate there. I can't even have a testimonial on that website. Oh my so my educational website is drcarolindean.com. Okay. D-R-C-A-R-O-L-Y-N-D-E-A-N.com. And um, you can link to my radio show, my webinars, my blogs, and podcasts, everything. I do put um, the books behind a wall because, you know, we have to get people to sign off that they're not an FDA agent looking to, mm. you know, shut me down. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, yep. I'll make sure to have all those links in the show notes for people so they can go and get them. And uh, I'm excited to share this with my community. So hopefully we can get the word out there and and hopefully, you know, lead people into a direction they haven't explored before. So thank you for, for, for being here. Oh, and thank you. And like I said, I, I appreciate you know, your broad expanse of knowledge and, and who, and your interviews, and I'm going to keep following you. Oh, thank you. That's a huge honor. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for listening to the evolving wellness podcast. Just a quick little reminder. This is not medical advice nor meant to be taken as a substitute for working one-on-one -on -one with a healthcare practitioner. And if you enjoy the show, please head on over to Apple or Spotify to leave the show up to a five-star review. If you're over on YouTube, please leave us a like, leave us a comment. I really appreciate you for being here, for listening to the show, and your support means the world to me as I continue to try to pull guests from around the world to bring you informative content to empower you to make decisions about your own health. Thank you so much for being here, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.